they can't all be this bad. Quran 91, verse 1. I swear by the sun and its brilliance, and by the moon when she follows him. I'm glad we cleared that up. The sun is a male, and the female moon follows him. What's more, the most common symbols of pagan gods are being used to authenticate Islam's deity. I swear by the day when it shows up, by the night as it conceals it, drawing a veil over it. Okay, I give up. What's it? By the heaven and him who built it, by the earth and him who spread it. It sounds like it was the earth, but became heaven, and then became the earth again. By Nafs, who was a person, and him who perfected it, and inspired it with what is wrong for it and right for it. Truly he succeeds that purifies it, and he fails that corrupts it. According to the Quran, religious success is found in purifying it. So why did God neglect to tell us what it is and how we are to go about purifying it once we find it? Quran 91 verse 11 Famud rejected their prophet through their inordinate wrongdoing and rebellious pride. Oh, no, not the dreaded prophet-taunting Talmuds again. Behold, the most wicked wretch among them broke forth, but the messenger said, Be cautious, it is a she-camel of God, and bar her not from having her drink. Islam's God and his prophet have an affinity for she-camels. Quran 91 verse 14 but they rejected him as a false prophet, and they hamstrung her. The dark spirit of Islam seldom ventures beyond the text he stole from the Hanifs and the Bible. Yet each attempt is a credibility disaster. The Thalmud are about to be obliterated for the heinous crimes of prophet rejection and she-camel abuse. Islam's troubled troubadour wants his critics to know that his God stands ready to obliterate all traces of them, too. So Allah, on account of their crime, obliterated their traces, doomed them, desolated their dwellings, leveling them to the ground, crushing them for their sin. Don't be messing with the prophet's she-camel. Quran 91, verse 15. And for him he does not fear the consequences. The benediction to this surah provides us with a haunting insight into the mindset of Muslims. The Islamic God and prophet have no conscience. Pulverizing their critics is all in a day's work. 9-11 was just another day at the office. In that one man's refuse is another man's food, I would be remiss not sharing what our disgruntled Islamic cleric had to say about the splendor of the 92nd surah. According to the style of the Quran's brief surahs, three moral characteristics of one kind and three of another have been presented as an illustration from among a vast strivings of man. Truth has been described in such brief, elegant, and pithy sentences that they move the heart and go down into memory as soon as one hears them. Such lavish praise is well beyond my meager means. Let's see if the pithy sentences of the next surah move the heart as they eloquently etch themselves into our memories. Quran 92, verse 1. I swear by the night when it draws a veil, and the day when it shines, and the creating of the male and female. Lo, your effort is dispersed toward diverse ends. So he who gives and fears and accepts the best, we will make smooth for him the path to bliss. The Islamic deity needs a new script writer, perhaps one who is literate. This is gobbledygook. The Islamic god likes those who give and fear and take the best for themselves. But hey, a confused spirit is better than one fixated on deceit, pain, and punishment. Unfortunately, Islam was conceived to steal money. Islam is the absence of freedom. Islam's dark spirit facilitates the path to misery. Quran 92, verse 8. But he who is a greedy miser and is unconcerned, acting niggardly, considering himself free, rejecting, we will make smooth for him the path to misery. Verse 11. And his wealth will not avail him when he goes down in destruction. My daddy could have written this, sir. He used to tell me, there are no Brinks trucks in funeral processions. Verse 12. 
Verily we, plural, take upon ourselves, also plural, to show the way, and verily unto us, plural, belong the last and the first. Therefore do I, now singular, warn you of a fire blazing fiercely. I used to be schizophrenic, but we're better now. None shall enter it but the most unhappy. The story of the unhappy crispy critters entering the blazing fire of hell doesn't sound so pithy or elegant to me. Quran 92, verse 16. He who giveth the lie denieth and turn away. I thought it might sound better left in the king's English, but it doesn't help. But he who fears shall be removed from it, and those who spend their wealth for increase and self-purification, and no one has with him any boon for which he should be paid back, but only the desire to seek the countenance of their Lord, he will attain complete pleasure. Since their Lord hangs out in hell, that's pretty ominous. For your entertainment pleasure, Allah would like to indulge you with a surah focused on debasing man. Surah 95, verse 1. I swear by the fig and the olive, and by the mount of Sinai, and by this city made secure. While well, swearing by figs is lame, calling a city secure that Mohammed was about to flee to save his life is pathetic. Quran 95, verse 4. We have indeed created man in the best molds. Then do we abase him, reducing him to the lowest of the low, except such as believe. For they shall have a reward unfailing. What causes you to deny the penalty? Verse 8. Is he not the wisest of judges? We have already examined the 96th surah, so let's skip ahead to the 97th. 97 verse 1. We have revealed it in the night of predestination. The Islamic conundrum. If we are predestined, then there is no reason for guidance. If there is no reason for guidance, there is no reason for a prophet. If there is no reason for a prophet, there is no value in a religious scam. No scam, no prophet, no prophet, no Muhammad, no Muhammad, no Allah, no Allah, no terrorists. If only. I'm not the first to be troubled by Islam's foolhardy allegiance to predestination. Bukhari. While we were in a funeral procession, Allah's apostle said, Every created soul has his place written for him, either in paradise or in hell. They have a happy or miserable fate predestined for them. A man said, Apostle, shall we depend upon what is written and give up doing good deeds? For whoever is destined to be fortunate will join the fortunate, and whoever is destined to be miserable will go to hell. And what will make you comprehend the grand night? The grand night is better than a thousand months. Therein come down the angels and the ruh, or spirit, by the Lord's permission on every errand. Mohammed and his Lord are singing their praises. The night of a thousand months is the celebration of that dark moment in the cave where the devil and prophet became one. It's the night we learned that we were blood clots, the night an illiterate man was asked to read. Ah, but it was also the night that we were told that the truth existed somewhere in a book, in the Bible perhaps, because God had taught men the use of the pen so that they might learn that which they did not know. Quran 97, verse 5. There is peace until the dawning of the day. See, Islam is a peaceful religion. Till morning, anyway. Then all hell breaks loose, just as it did in New York City at 8.45 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, September 11, 2001. It was Islam's most revealing hour. It is why we must expose a doctrine capable of driving men to such madness.